there. Are you approaching perimenopause or are in menopause and have heard about hormone replacement therapy but are not quite sure how it can help you? Or maybe you've been curious about HRT and talked to your family and friends about it or your doctor and been told it's dangerous. So if you've heard something like this, if this sounds like you, keep watching because this video is for you. Hi, my name is Hillary Rank, and I'm the creator of the 40 Feels Fabulous Method, where I help women over 40 gain more energy, lose extra fat, and love who they see in the mirror. And today I'm sharing with you a Facebook Live video that I did in my Facebook group, 40 Feels Fabulous. And the topic was whether or not hormone replacement therapy is dangerous or if it's the key to the fountain of youth. So stick with me and keep watching. Hi there. Welcome to the live video this week. I am so excited for this live. I've been wanting to do um, some content around this for a while. And um, I spent a lot of time with the research for this live. So I'm going to be sharing a lot of inf interesting information. So if you'll just stick with me, it might be longer than normal lives. Um, but you're really going to want to come back to this live, watch it over and over. I post it every um, Facebook live in the unit section of our group. So you can easily find the replay there. Um, so the subject today is, is hormone replacement dangerous, hormone replacement therapy dangerous or the key to the fountain of youth? And um, let me know, hit the like or love button. Um, if you want to re reverse the aging process, but just are confused with all the conflicting information from the media, your doctor, and even friends and family, I have had clients tell me that their mom tells them, well, you know, aging just means being miserable and gaining weight and, you know, feeling frumpy. And that's just the way it is. So, um, so maybe you've already started feeling the effects of aging and are terrified what the next 10 years will bring. And um, maybe the only way to lose 20 pounds is to cut off an arm. You feel exhausted all day, but can't stay asleep at night. You kill yourself at the gym, but your body never changes. Um, and you vaguely remember feeling horny, but mopping the floor sounds more fun than having sex. And that's pretty sad, right? And you're going to walk away with a greater understanding about hormone replacement therapy, what role hormones play in all body processes and in preventing chronic disease and the undesired symptoms of aging and the do's and don'ts of taking hormones so you can make a better decision about whether it's right for you. So this information will help pre-menopausal women, so either approaching perimenopause or in it, so um, exactly all the women in this group in your late 30s to 40s, and menopausal women. If you haven't explored hormone replacement therapy, this will be very helpful. So comment below, let me know if this is helpful. I just judging by the amount of women who actually requested to join this group this morning after I broadcasted that I was gonna do this live, um, it shows to me that it's a very compelling talk topic for you. And, you know, for me, it's just a topic of passion because, you know, so many times um, we just aren't informed of all of the options for us. And I feel like we're there's a big disservice done to women um, our age and older about you know, the things that you can do to take back control of your health and to feel happy, healthy, confident, and sexy as we age and make it not be a time of dread and make it a good time in our life. So let me get down to it. So I think I've set this up enough. I, I get from a lot of women, oh, I can't take hormone replacement therapy because it causes cancer. I've got breast cancer in my family, so it's just not an option for me or that it's dangerous, that my doctor said that, you know, it's dangerous, I can't do it. So I wanna talk about where the myth that hormone replacement is dangerous and causes cancer comes from. And um, part of it is you have to learn a little bit more about hormones. So I'm gonna dive into that, try to keep it as high level as possible, but 
It is also really important that you know under, and understand your hormones. And I actually did a separate video about that that actually did really, really well. Um, it was on my business page and on my YouTube channel. So this all came about. Um, so prior to 2002, doctors were regularly prescribing hormone replacement therapy for women. And of course, there's some see benefits, some don't, but overall they were seeing benefits from it. But in 2002, there was a study done by the FDA and the National Institute of Health, and they came out saying that hormone replacement therapy was no longer safe. And the FDA and the endocrine society both said that there was little to no evidence that natural hormones were safer than synthetic hormones. And some of which are made from horse urine. So behind the scenes, scenes unknown to many physicians. I mean, this might be surprising to some, but you know, just because you know your doctor has a degree doesn't mean they're staying up on the latest research um, and they're specialized in certain areas. So unknown to many physicians, media, and women, a reanalysis of past studies has shown new evidence and understanding about the safety, effectiveness, and benefits of hormone therapy. There is new science showing that hormones are not always dangerous as we first thought, and I'll go over when they are dangerous, um, and they actually protect many aspects of health in certain women. So with the proper hormones, nutrition, and lifestyle changes, it can help you look, think, and feel fit and fabulous at any age. Um, there is a large body of scientific evidence that tells a different story than what we've been told that HRT is dangerous, but so it's been overlooked, declared not to exist by many professional organizations in mainstream me medicine. Sound familiar with anything? Um, but if balancing our hormones through lifestyle changes and restoring hormones by prescription can make aging the time of our life and safe, if it can prevent diseases such as osteoporosis, cancer, heart disease, and Alzheimer's, we need to know about it and make an informed decision. So, um, so why is this one of the most well-kept secrets and why is it the subject of so many outdated beliefs? So to kind of simplify things, your body has an internal internet system, so to speak, for communicating. So one cell sends a message to another cell and then that cell has mail. This is how all your body processes work. When it has mail, it's telling the cell what to do. So um, what delivers most of this mail? It's actually hormones. So our cells itself are too busy to read the mail. So they have an assistant and that's called our receptors. We have receptors all over our body. We've got lung receptors, heart receptors, hormone receptors. So when a hormone is sent through your body and it sees the right receptor that it fits with, it wiggles on. So together they form a slightly new shape. And this shape shifting means that the email has been delivered and then it starts a cascade of constant other messages for as long as the hormone stays with the receptor. So once they receive this email, the cells receive the message as to what they should be doing. So it sounds pretty important, right? They need to know what to do. Well, the problem with receptors is that they're kind of a people pleaser. So they can easily accept messages to over receive, over oblige and over accommodate. So they can take on um, messages. Um, so they're basically just open for work. So when we introduce non-human molecules like fake or synthetic hormones, our receptors take them in and they basically hijack our cells. So, um, all kinds of foreign molecules that are similar to our own, but, but, fake, like pesticides, plastics, food dye, makeup, and foods, they can be welcomed by well-meaning receptors and end up doing harm in our body. So that's a separate video of in of itself to talk about um, these foreign molecules um, from daily use products. And I have talked about it before, but I think it's time to do another video. But I, I want to focus on hormones today. So hormones can have a chemical structure identical to human hormones, even though, though they're produced in a laboratory. So since the molecular structure is exactly the same, like if you looked under a microscope, as the hormones our bodies make, the same as our bodies make, they're called bioidentical. So you might've heard about bioidentical hormones. They have a matching molecular structure to your own hormones produced in your body. In comparison, synthetic or animal hormones, because that's what most synthetic hormones are, they slip into receptors and deliver messages too, but their messages are slightly different. 
So what shape does the cell take when it accepts a message delivered by a form of estrogen it has never seen before, like horse urine? So they are similar but not identical, and they create new shapes and new messages. They're metabolized differently and cleared out of the body differently. So the use of non-bioidentical, so synthetic hormones, is mostly, but not entirely, behind many of the frightening outcomes women and doctors have heard about. So they're associated with many adverse health effects, such as breast cancer, heart attack, and even stroke. So, and because many of our daily use products contain, they're called xenoestrogens. So they're fake estrogen, but they're similar our cells take them on. So the pesticides, plastics, and petroleum products that are similar um, in our accommodating receptors take them in. And that has an effect in of itself. That's why so many women these days, like even a client I have, she's 16. She already has PCOS. Like that is why we're seeing this cascade of hormone imbalances. So the less we mess with nature, the better we are. Um, so it's so, so important. Let me just check to see if there's any comments. Um, yes, go into detail. I'm in early menopause and do to have an emergency hysterectomy almost. Oh, oh, early menopause. Cause you had an emergency hysterectomy. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to talk, thank you about asking about the bioidentical pellets. I'm going to talk about that, um, actually at the, at, um, towards the end. So when I'm talking about the do's and don'ts of hormone replacement, so I promise I will get to that. So, um, so hormones, do, and you know, just as I've started coaching women and focusing on this niche of helping women balance hormones naturally and becoming aware of the hormones, I mean, I was the same way. Um, I didn't really, before I started having major health issues and had to find the solution, didn't find a lot of answers from re regular doctors and found out that really the key was my hormones. Um, before that, I only thought about hormones in terms of PMS and getting pregnant. So hit me a like button if you feel the same way too. You just don't really, you know that you've got hormones, but just don't fully understand about what's going on. So um, don't worry, I'm going to get to that. But I just would like to see the other women who maybe are re haven't really given much thought to their hormones. So the truth is that Hormones affect all of your organs and body processes from your breast, heart, gut, bones, brain, and joints. And there's, I mean, the simple fact is, is, you know, men already knew that women were complicated, but we are that much more complicated than men because we have such different levels of hormones and, you know, we get pregnant. Um, our hormones really rule how we look, think, and feel. So healthy hormones help your body know what it's supposed to do, when it should do it, when it shouldn't, how to feel good while doing it, and when to say yes or no. They keep us feeling energetic and focused. Focus. So I had so many women who joined this group. They say the biggest obstacle to feeling happy and healthy um, and feeling fantastic in their 40s is energy. And so as you can see, hormones have a huge thing to do with it. And so many of us don't even realize it. So Balanced hormones reduce the risk of osteoporosis. Balance and sufficient hormones help us keep our lean, girlish figures and reduce appetite. So you can see why hormones are so important. And um, just perimenopause. So, you know, there's like a technical term, but even in our late 30s, I, I mean, our hormone emailing is all over the map. So that's kind of the approaching perimenopause. So our hormones are all over the, the place with spikes and dips hour by hour and day by day. And our ovaries start to take vacations <laughs> before they retire. So that's why so many women, um, just like you, are feeling all of these same symptoms. But menopause is when the email is erratic and then stops completely due to the decline in production of hormones. So all of these changes in your life are um, signal in these signals that are given to your body, they leave you feeling unhealthy or as if you don't even recognize yourself. The body likes balance in all things, especially hormones. And this is called homeostasis. And that's when we feel our best when we're in homeostasis. So balanced hormones alleviate a lot of symptoms that society and you probably associate with aging. 
fatigue, poor sleep, poor digestion, belly fat, bloating, and low sex drive. And if and if you're not exploring hormone replacement therapy, therapy, um, most doctors are actually just prescribing prescriptions to cover these symptoms, and they're not treating the root cause. So you don't have to feel like you're 100 years old at 40 or 50. If you you can feel great if your body is balanced. So if we get cancer, we treat it with anti-cancer drugs. If we get an infection, we treat it with antibiotics. If we have wrinkles. I know not everybody, but a lot of us get Botox. So why is there a problem with aging softeners, especially if science can show that they prolong and protect health? So, so it sounds like supplementing hormones could be the fountain of youth, but why all the bad rap? Okay, so we have to dig, dig a little bit deeper in estrogen. I know, you know, we're getting into a lot of science here, but it's, again, I can't reiterate enough. It's so important that you have a high level, just like a high level understanding of what's going on in your body. So you can um, come to your doctor with the most um, and speak to them in an educated way to advocate for yourself. So, um, okay. So I'm sure most of you know that estrogen is the major female hormone. It's the mother of all of our, uh, all of hormones. So as I said, we're very complicated and estrogen is actually an umbrella term for 30 to 60 related molecules that act similarly enough to be called estrogen and estrogen is vital for growth. So, um, so we need to understand, to understand safe and unsafe estrogen, we have to understand about estrogen receptors. Remember the receptors are taking, they're the assistant to the cell and they're taking the messages that are being sent from cell to cell. So. Um, ER alpha, so estrogen recept receptor alpha is when estrogen delivers emails to this receptor and the messages promote cell growth. And ER beta is when estrogen delivers emails to this receptor and the messages block excessive cell growth. So your ER alpha receptors promote growth in your breasts, your heart, your uterus, your brain, your bones, your intestines, your cells and in, in blood vessels, pretty much every cell in your body. But your ER beta tells your cells to stay calm and balanced. They keep things under control. Your ER beta protects our breasts so much that when you turn off beta receptors, it can initiate the first step in cancer. Because remember, E, like an excess of ER alpha receptors, those are your growth receptors. So if you turn off the beta receptors, you introduce in something into your body that causes cancer, then it initiates the growth of cancer cells. If there are more alpha receptors than beta, it can promote growth of a tumor. So the more ER beta signaling there is in the breast, the less incidence of cancer. The more turned off, the greater the risk. So I'm sure you know where I'm going, going with this. Uh, um, it all comes down to the balance of, e, of your beta and alpha receptors. So beta protects the lungs, protects your ovaries, signals the feel-good hormones like serotonin, um, you know, that, that helps us feel happy. And if you've ever heard the term estrogen dominance, so um, I want anyone that be, anyone who's listening or watches this in a replay, let me know if you've been told that you're estrogen dominant or heard of estrogen dominance. It's, you know, I think it's thrown about a lot here, um, a lot these days. And estrogen dominance can have really na nasty side effects, excess weight gain, a lot of PMS symptoms, bloating. Um, so it's usually thought of a bad thing, but what we don't really understand is what it is. And now that I've told you, now you're going to understand that um, estrogen dominance actually means the excess of alpha receptors, those growth receptors. So how can our, our receptors get in balance? So what lowers ER beta dominance? Of course, estrogen. So synthetic estrogen, synthetic progestins, which I'm going to go into next. Uh, um, a, a deficiency in your natural progesterone. And I could do a separate video about that too. The first hormone to go when we're stressed and what 40 year old woman is not stressed is progesterone and it's naturally declining in our bodies. Diets low in pl plant estrogens and plant estrogens and cruciferous vegetables, diets low in whole grains and a vitamin six B6 deficiency. 
So what pr promotes ER office signaling? Well, unfortunately, being overweight, being stressed, a junk food diet, um, if you have a hypothyroidism or an untreated low functioning thyroid, and I've done other videos about that, about how common this is, and it's all due to hormone imbalance, low progesterone levels, um, too much alcohol, and exposure to estrogenic chemicals in our daily use products, which I talked a little bit about, and then the vitamin B6 deficiency. So, um, so you can see it's so, so important that your receptors are balanced, that you have proper ER beta and ER alpha. So that's going to be important to remember when I talk about why hormone replacement therapy can be dangerous. And I think you're going to understand, obviously, it's if you're taking a hormone replacement that supports the growth of your estrogen receptor alphas, and um, that can cause cancer. But um, I want to talk about progesterone because this is such a crucial hormone. Um, oh yeah, someone said, yes, I've heard about estrogen dominance related to me having PCOS. I actually have another book for you to read. Um, I'm gonna share a book where I'm getting a lot of this research from, it's just excellent. But there's another book from another naturopath. She talks all about PCOS. I don't have PCOS, but I've had several clients that I've helped that have PCOS. She actually hypothesizes it's actually about an estrogen, um, low estrogen that causes PCOS. So that might be of interest to you. I'll share it with you towards the, um, I'll put it in the notes of this video when I'm finished. But let's talk about progesterone. So progesterone is the term for our natural hormone. It's very important to remember that. Like it's our natural hormone when Okay, I'll explain in a second. It's not a class of hormones like estrogen, but it's one hormone molecule. And um, progesterone has a love-hate relationship with estrogen. So progesterone needs estrogen um, so it can deliver its own emails. It's Estrogen helps progesterone um, send its own signals to cells. But progesterone also polices estrogen and can turn off ER alpha signaling from growing cells out of control. It protects breast cells. And as I said before, I'll repeat again, it's the first hormone to diminish under chronic stress. So progesterone calms the body, brain, and nerves and helps keep estrogen safe. One reason perimenopause and postmenopausal women are prone to anxiety and eventually cognitive decline is they have lower and lower levels of progesterone. So natural progesterone in the brain protects vital nerves that help us stay at high levels of cognitive function. So progesterone helps up push out excess estrogen. Natural progesterone helps with reduced anxiety, better sleep, depression, menstrual issues, hot flashes, libido, and increases confidence. And it's, um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the mental um, impact hormones have on you, but it's increasing your confidence because it's making you feel more calm, right? Um, and it's helping you stay healthy and less bloated and less anxiety. It helps reduce cholesterol levels and it reverses age dependent changes in the brain. So natural progesterone is so safe that the FDA has approved it for out over the counter sales. So let me know if anyone's tried natural progesterone, um, if they've known someone that's tried progesterone and um, you know, if it worked for them. I'd love to hear about it. Um, I've taken actually natural progesterone and natural testosterone as well. So synthetic progestin, so notice how I'm using the word progest progestins. They're synthetic versions of progesterone, but they're very commonly mistakenly called progesterone. And your doctor might be calling them progesterone. I actually, that client who the 16 year old who has PCOS had not gotten her menstrual cycle and the doctor said, oh, well, we'll give her a shot of progesterone to spur on her menstrual cycle. Well, in talking to her mother, it was not progesterone. It was progestin. She's had like a cascade of issues from it. But so um, progestins do not have the same molecular structural structure as natural progesterone and are linked to serious side effects. So instead of protecting the breast from excessive e, um, ER alpha signaling, they amplify it. In fact, studies now suggest that most of the increase in breast cancer from HRT is from when synthetic progestins were added in the mix. So that was one of the big 
well, big messages, I mean, very clear in the study done in 2002. Remember that I told you that that it's the World Health Organization published it and there was a whole bunch of agencies involved, but that was really where the bad rap started. So many people, including this might surprise you, doctors and researchers make the mistake of using the term progesterone when in fact they're referring to the synthetic alternative progestin. This had le has led to much misinformation being spread about the great lack of understanding about HRT. I have had another client, she's in, in menopause. She was on birth control. So um, so-called hormonal birth control is not real hormones. They contain progestin and synthetic hormones. So, um, you know, there's also a line of thought that birth control fixes period problems. It does not do that at all. It actually shuts down your receptors in your body in your own natural body proce processes. So it masks the root causes of your period issues. So now this will be of interest to the um, person who I can't see who made the comment while I'm doing StreamYard, um, who said that she had the early menopause due to hysterectomy. Um, so many gynecologists, I'd be very interested to know if your gynecologist like told you this too that if a woman does not have a uterus, she does not need progesterone replacement therapy. That's not the case. So progesterone gently balances out many of the side effects of potentially excessive and damaging estrogenic email throughout the body. So estrogen that is unopposed by progesterone is potentially harmful. So this is where the um, that myth comes from that HRT is dangerous. Hell yes, if you're just giving your body like synthetic estrogen or even bioidentical estrogen and not supplementing with progesterone and your body is not producing progesterone anymore, you can absolutely see how that balance between the receptors gets um, out of balance and those ER alpha receptors are growing unchecked. So a human study on thousands of women over a 12 year period in France show that natural progesterone helps keep estrogen safe. So women taking natural estrogen, estrogen and progesterone had a significant reduction in breast cancer compared to women taking estrogen with synthetic progestins. So bottom line, if you do choose hormone replacement therapy, if this is something that you and your doctor decide on, studies show that pairing bioidentical estrogen with bioidentical progesterone is safer. So um, I wanna be very clear, and some of you might've heard about this, about, um, well, customary hormone replacement therapy and the subject of that study that I'm talking about can, is a pill containing Premarin and Provera. Primarin is horse estrogen and Provera is a progestin. So both don't have identical molecules to the hormones created in your body. So what happened to that study in 2002? So the first trial looked at Prempro. It's um, actually a different pill. It's horse estrogen and synthetic progestin. And the second trial looked at women given only horse estrogen, um, Primarin. So that could be another video too. There was a lot of criticisms of the study. The design was flawed. They only used one protocol of synthetic hormones. A majority of the participants were already overweight. And I said, that is a risk factor. There was many dropouts of the study, but why is this old news persisting? And I think we can all agree. I mean, most of us <laughs> recognize bad news sells. So bad news or, you know, gloom and doom sells. And these new hopeful studies um, aren't really making the rounds. And also doctors aren't up on the latest research. And I'm not saying that they're, they're not up on it because they're negligent. I'm saying doctors are really busy and there's, it's like an average 10 minute doctor's visit. I mean, how much time does your doctor actually have to educate you on hormones, talk about this, let alone do research of their own. And especially if you're going to a primary care um, physician, they're definitely not, not going to be up in hormones. And I've even had a lot of clients who, you know, the regular gynecologists really don't educate them about this. And so 
they don't have all the facts. And so bottom line, women aren't getting educated. You don't, you are not empowered to stand up for yourself at your doctor and bring this compelling information. And a lot of times doctors aren't doing the proper testing. So that takes me into the do's and don'ts of taking, of, of taking hormones. So number one is get tested. I can't tell you like most every client that I started working with has not gotten her hormones tested in, you know, a year or more. And she's dealing with a lot of these symptoms. She's miserable, but it's not a chronic disease. And she might be told like patted on the back or the head and told that you're fine. Your ranges are normal for a woman your age, but you don't feel normal. So I'm going to be posting a document in the unit section of this course with a list of important tests women over 40 should be getting, especially if you're not feeling your best, especially if you have chronic fatigue, you can't lose weight, you have low sex drive. I, I can't tell you, I've also heard, you know, oh, well, I don't need hormone replacement therapy, but you know, I'm having difficulty losing weight. I'm in menopause. I have difficulty losing weight and I don't have any sex drive. Well, I mean, that's fine. I mean, those aren't chronic things. If you don't want to look into HRT, that's totally your prerogative because I'm going to say, you know, HRT isn't the end all be all. You absolutely have to make lifestyle changes and nutrition changes at the same time. But, but the bottom line is when we're in menopause, our body stops producing estrogen and progesterone pretty much completely at, 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 at some point. So although nutrition and lifestyle changes can significantly help, they're never going to replace that hormone production. It's a little bit different when we're younger and we're still producing those hormones. We can get more back into balance through natural means. Um, but you just have to understand that menopause means that you're not producing those hormones anymore. So um, if your doctor won't run the test for you, I get that a lot. I worked with a bunch, a lot of women in the UK and um, overseas, and there's like no education about this. And many doctors won't even run the test. So there's ways I know in the States that you can order tests for yourself. Number two, super, super important is to find a practitioner who listens to you as a person and does not treat you as a laboratory range. And another thing is like, oh, well, my doctor says my hormones are normal for my age. Okay. Yeah. But that still means that you don't have hormones. You're not producing hormones and you have side effects. You have no sex drive. You, you know, you might feel depressed and, you know, you're still having symptoms. So, I mean, that, that happened to me so, so much. Like I felt like a shadow of my former self, but my blood work was normal. So just because it's in the normal laboratory range does not mean it's normal for you. And then third, I mentioned this already, we cannot rely on a pill alone to help like solve this hormone issue. And you know, that's so common in the United States that we want a pill to fix everything, but nutrition, lifestyle changes, and stress reduction are critical. So that's why my 40 feels fabulous group coaching program. Um, it has three pillars and it's nutrition movement and mindset or in stress reduction. So first I take women through a three part nutrition plan to heal their hormonal infrastructure. First their liver, their gut. And then I focus on hormone imbalance specific nutrition and help walk them through this whole process of discovering what's going on with their doctors and help them be their own health detective. And then I teach how our thoughts cause stress and powerful mindset techniques that help you begin to think differently, which helps reduce stress and increases the ability to stick with nutrition. Because lots of us, you know, we want to change, but we, um, it's, we don't have the motivation. Well, I think I've shown through this video that part of the motivation issues are from hormone imbalances, but also a big part of it is it starts in our head and you can't see changes if you can't stick to the things that are going to make the changes. So um, learning how to think differently. So that in turn reduces stress and your reaction to life. It increases the ability to stick to nutrition and fitness that helps us feel better. And then I've done a million videos on this too, movement. Um, so many women just focus on cardio thinking that's the way to lose weight, but it's actually the last thing you should be doing to um, 
help balance your hormones and see body changes as we're getting older. So, all right, I'm almost to the hormone pellets. Let me just go over that right now. So hormone pellets, um, there are bioidentical hormone pellets. Um, they're kind of like a, um, a pretty common thing. They're like the new thing, newfangled. Um, a lot of naturopaths do it. So what they are take, they're doing is they're taking um, bioidentical, like estrogen or progesterone or testosterone and injecting them subcutaneously in your body. And so then you don't have to take a regular pill or cream um, or vaginal suppository for these hormones. So I think you've probably gotten the picture that I am a fan of bioidentical hormone replacement therapy if you feel like it's right for you. But my beef with pellets is that your doctor is guessing the dosage that she, that he or she is injecting you with. And once you are injected with this, these bioidentical hormones, there's no going back. I mean, you can't reduce the dose. You can't, um, like, so I personally have had some extreme reactions. Like I am very sensitive to progesterone replacement. So I have to be on a really low dose. So if a, a doctor per injected me with the normal dose that works for most women, like literally I'd be going out of my mind with like depression and anxiety because it actually takes me the other way. So that's why I want you to be very cautious with the pellets. Um, there's other methods of of um, taking the hormones. As I said, you can take a pill, you can take a cream, you can take um, a vaginal suppository for some of these. So it really is important that you have a doctor that you can communicate with who will listen to what is going on and tweak. It does take some tweaking to get the right combination. It's not a one size fits all. And so that's my concern with the pellets. It's kind of taking a one size fits all approach. You don't know how you're gonna react and it could be too much for you or it could be too little. And then where do you go? It's kind of expensive to get the pellets. It's like, I think it's like, could be more than $300 every three months. I mean, I guess that's not that bad, but why not take something where you can control the dose is the question, you know? And then talking about if you're a breast cancer survivor. So bioidentical HRT might be an option for breast cancer survivors. Um, I'm going to um, share with you the book that I'm referencing. Um, you could take this book to your doctor, but it's more if women are in remission five years out. So the information I'm sharing with you today is from the book, Safe Hormones, Smart Women by Dr. Lindsay Berkson. And it's a breakthrough understanding of estrogen and bioidentical hormones. So, um, you know, she talks about nutrition and all, everything that I went through, you can really dive deeper. So I'm gonna put this in the notes of the, of the video. So the um, question is, if you can get help with this, would this be useful? How would it impact your life if you're able to balance your hormones and prevent the unpleasant side, side effects of aging? So get the book. And if you're interested in getting help, so me walking, taking you by the hand, walking you through this and walking you through the protocol, the nutrition, movement, and stress reduction techniques, um, you can get on the waiting list for my group coaching program, which I'm launching next month. It's called 40 Feels Fabulous. And um, I'd love to help you. So hope you enjoyed the information. Let me know. I know this was a longer one, but it's so, so important. It's so important that we get educated, empower, and stand up for ourselves. All right. Have a great day. And I think I've talked long enough now. So um, talk to you soon.